We're here with Noah Mallon, who is head of social for MEC. Now, Noah, what was the most exciting thing about this session yesterday? Talking about how data is informing mobile and the fact that we have so much of it, and yet we actually don't know as much as we should, given how much data we have. How do you sort through all that data to have it be actionable? What we try to do is remember there's a human being at mm -hmm. the end of whatever is happening. If you are putting video out there, there's a person that you want to have see it, and there's an outcome that you want to have from them seeing it. So if you hone in on what that outcome is and how we know that outcome occurred, whether it's a sale, whether it's somebody thought about your brand differently or they know now that you have a new product, it helps to clarify the kind of data that's relevant to that versus things that are completely irrelevant but are like nice to have. All right, let's move to one of the most exciting topics in any marketer's portfolio. Of VR. How are you using VR in an experimental way to get ready for it when it's much more scalable and efficient? What we found for a lot of uh, what we've done in VR are things like on-site activations work really well. We have a lot of brands that have an experiential quality to them and giving people the opportunity to see locations those brands are connected with, uh, to uh, experience what the product can bring to you and to do that in person is really powerful. So that's been a good kind of stepping stone into more um, elaborate VR production. VR is one. The other one we, we keep hearing about is AI. Are you using AI in any particular capacity with brand campaigns? The balancing point for us is understanding um, how to use AI smartly, especially when there's an interaction with a customer, but also make sure there's a human element so that it doesn't feel like the brand is simply kind of putting a barrier and using an AI program to not have the, the customer have contact with the brand. So there's kind of a fine line there. Um, and I still think, you know, with all the data and all, everything that we can do with AI, and you can see this with platforms and how they're struggling with some of the more automated things that are there, um, the human element is still important to kind of mitigate and to make sure that you're really having an experience and not just something that is um, going to feel off-putting. I think that, you know, the brand needs to really be humanized, right, to connect with the customer. How are you doing that overall? I'm talking about everything you're overseeing so that there's that relevant, intimate relationship, but at the same time you're getting across kind of the brand initiatives and the brand marketing that you want to. We want to start with understanding um, how the brand understands itself. And if we have a client that's still defining who they are, and what they stand for, we try to work with them so that they have that defined before we start storytelling. Um, because when you come to a story from a place of, this is who we are, this is the core of our being, so when we talk about the initiatives and the products that we have, there's this thread that runs through it. Uh, it's always going to be more powerful than just laying out, oh, here's a story about this, here's a story about that. We've got this product launching, but without that core of what a brand stands for. We're lucky in that we have brands like Marriott, where there's this very strong thread that runs through with focus on the customer, the quality of that, and even through all of their brands, that's always this kind of bright shining thread that runs through. So it makes the storytelling aspect of what they do really sing in a way that I think other brands have to aspire to. Curious how you see influencer marketing playing a role in kind of the strategies that you're executing. Um, you see a lot of confusion between what I would call celebrity marketing mm -hmm. and true influencer marketing, and they both have a place. But for us, those mid-tier influencers who may not be uh, Lady Gaga, but if you're an expert in a particular you know way, or you are known for the quality of what you do on a particular platform, people will follow and kind of be interested in what you have to say. And if you find people who are highly relevant to the brand and you're able to understand who their audience is, which is I think a big piece that's often missing in influencer outreach and campaigns, is not just who the influencer is and what they say, what does our audience say? What is our audience interested right. in? Um, you can actually do these really efficient, smart influencer campaigns um, but the other big piece of that is I, you know, really push us to look for influencers who are creative themselves. And we're not just giving them stuff to pass along. Here's a link. Make sure you blog about this. No. What we're interested in are influencers who have a particular vision and an eye and who can help translate uh, the stories that our brands are trying to tell into their language. And when they do that, we find that to be really successful and very impactful. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.